Hi, yeah. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to recursion. So, what is recursion? Well, recursion is a situation where you have a function that calls itself. And what that allows us to do is to have another way of doing repetition. It's another version of loops, essentially. So, if you can make the paradigm shift in your thinking to recursion, in certain instances, it's a lot easier to write a recursive function than use some kind of a loop. So let's go ahead and get started. If recursion is another form of repetition, in other words, loops, maybe the best thing to do is to start off with a function that's not a recursive function so we can draw some parallels. So let me write a quick function that just uses a loop to count down some numbers, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off, for example. So I'm going to need a main function, and function that we will write, how about we name it um, looped countdown. So looped countdown will accept an integer as its only argument, and will count down from that argument down to 1, and then we'll say display blast up on the screen. Right, so we'll have something that looks kind of like this. I have an infinite loop on purpose, and there's a reason for it for that. Just trust me here. I'm going to draw some parallels with the recursive function. So if i is equal to 0, then we've reached the end of the repetition. The repetition is over, and we want to display a blast off onto the screen. Okay, so there we go. Otherwise, what do we want to do? If we haven't reached zero, then we want to display, you know, like five dot dot, four dot dot, three dot dot, right? We want to we want to show the number uh, that we're currently at, and then we want to have another repetition. Right? If i is not equal to zero, then we get past the first i statement, and then we want to display uh, the contents of i. And then, in order to eventually get to i, to get to the case when the repetition is going to stop we're going to need to have a variable that takes us one step closer to i equaling zero. So how about we have the statement here I is set to i minus one. Let's go ahead and compile this thing and test it. There we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, blast off. Okay, so let's write a recursive version of this exact same function. Right? So we'll call it void recursive countdown. Okay, so we'll have same parameter, but this time this function isn't going to use a loop. We're going to have no loop inside it. We're not going to have a while loop or anything like that inside here. What we're going to have is we're going to have an if statement and we're going to have an else part. So recursive functions generally follow this pattern where they have an if followed by an else. If i is equal to zero. Right? See how this maps onto the or notice as, we, as I go through and write this, how it's going to map onto uh, the loops countdown function above. Anyway, if i equals zero, that's when we want the repetition to stop, right? So we're going to say C out blast off. I'm not going to need a break statement here because this isn't a loop. It's a recursive function. So all we need in here is just the C out statement. Okay, now in the else part, the else part is where we're going to display the C out I dot 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 and also move ourselves closer to ending the repetition and causing another repetition to occur. Right? So let us display the dot 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 dot, the uh, number followed by dot 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 dot, and then let's move ourselves closer to I equaling zero in terminating the repetition. But now here's where the recursive part comes in. This is where the function calls itself. So inside of this else, we'll have recursive countdown function call to itself. So this is going to cause to have another instance of this function loaded into memory. But in that second instance of the function, i is going to be one less. And this is going to continue repeating over and over and over again until i is equal to zero. Right? In which case, when i equals zero, all that's going to happen in that last instance of the function is that we're going to have blast off display on the screen, and then it's over. 
So what's going to happen here is that when you first call this function or when we call this function, we're going to end up with this chain of function calls, right? Where a recursive countdown of 10 ends up calling recursive countdown of nine, which ends up calling recursive countdown of eight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until we get to a call of recursive countdown of zero, which causes this clause right here to kick in. And notice there's no function call inside of this block. So that terminates the repetition, no more function calls, the recursion is over. Each part of this recursive function has a name. The i equals zero part is called the base case. And the base case is what you need to have evaluate true in order to have the recursion terminate. Without this, if i equals zero break part in our while loop and looped countdown function, we'd have infinite loop. Well, without this base case causing no further function calls to happen, we'd have infinite recursion. Now, in the else part, this is where we have the function call, and this is what causes us to have another repetition. And the recursive countdown here, this is the recursive function call, right? So there's a couple different things. Let's see how this maps on. I equals zero causes the recursion to stop, the repetition via our recursive function to stop. The I equals zero up here causes the repetition to stop. Now, in this context, it's in a loop, but still the repetition terminates. And in our recursive function, the recursive countdown function call causes us to have another repetition, but the argument i minus one brings us one step closer to the base case, the i equaling zero, stopping the repetition. In the loop countdown function, i gets set to i minus one, brings us one step closer to i equaling zero and the loop terminating. So let's go ahead and compile this and test it. Let me put a function call in to recursive countdown. And we'll start the countdown from seven with this one. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and so see, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 5, 1, blast off, that's from looped countdown. And then the second set of numbers is from our recursive countdown. So, bring this video to a close here. And in this video, just to summarize, briefly talked about what recursion is, an alternative to loops, another form of repetition. And the recursive function is going to have a call to itself, and that's called the recursive call. And you're going to have a base case. Base case is the situation that you reach that stops recursion. And your recursive function has to have some way of getting one step closer to the base case. Here it's i minus 1, and that eventually causes i equal to 0. And when i equals 0, the else doesn't kick in, which means that the recursive function call doesn't happen, which means no more repetition. Similar to how in the loop, as soon as i equals 0, the i minus 1 here was bringing us one step closer to i equaling 0, causing us to break out of the loop and terminate the repetition. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.